Hey guys, and thanks for watching my video. If this video provides you any value, please don't forget to like it and subscribe if you want to follow my game dev journey. So did I say I failed? Yes, I failed to create a finished game in my first 12 hour game jam. At first I was pretty bummed when my time ran out and I wanted to cheat to complete it, maybe start over. But then I thought to myself, no! Game developers on YouTube have to be responsible. They have to have integrity. Also, the clock is visible in my video and it would have been a lot of trouble to crop it out. Honesty goes a long way, folks. That brings me to my topic. The first thing I learned from this experience is to plan out your game. If you have 12 hours to complete it, you don't need to wing it. Take that first 30 minutes and plan effectively. What do you want to include in the game? Decide what you want to cut. Believe me, taking 30 minutes at the beginning to really map the game out will be a blessing when it comes down to the wire and you've spent half your time cutting or reworking features. Not to say that during your game ideas won't change, but try to minimize that with a little bit of planning at the forefront. This actually leads us to number two, compromise is necessary. If you're new to game design, short 12 hour or 24 hour challenges can be a great way to test where you're at, improve your development skills, as well as allow you to finish a few games, which from what I understand is a key part of development. Nobody would play Animal Crossing but only had 70% of the mechanics and everybody was a default cube. But if you're a budding developer like I am, you probably won't be able to add all the features you want in such a small amount of time. This is where compromise comes in. Keep the essential features of the game, the ones that make it fun, make it worthwhile, and most importantly, make it finished. In a setting like this, the goal is to complete the game to its most fundamental state. But I emphasize the word fun. Games can't be boring. I mean, games shouldn't be boring. Oh, whatever, I'm just learning. They should be fun to you. In this kind of challenge, fun and mechanics should actually come second to finishing the game. I know, I know, I should take my own advice. The third thing I learned was actually from YouTube creator Jason Wyman, who runs Unity 3D College. He has a video about creating prototype games, how you should go about it, and how much time you should spend on it. I actually highly recommend it, and the link is in the description below. But one major thing he said resonated with me. When making a game in a small period of time, whether that's a prototype or a game jam, keep your code files small and simple. Or something like that. One major issue that I ran into with this pizza maker game was about halfway in when I decided to use my add to pizza script as a house for every functionality in the game. The true downfall of this process lay in the impossible complexity of this one script. It seemed like every method and every variable was intertwined. If I fixed one thing, three other things broke. The hard coding and the brute force solutions weren't enough, and, and I blame the length of this code. The fourth thing I learned from creating this game is to follow agile development procedures. Agile development is a methodology that allows a creator to prioritize what's important, implement those features, and then test. Now I know, this is mainly for huge companies like Facebook or Amazon, but if they use it, maybe we should too. What this means is that every time you add a functionality or change something in the game, you should test it. Make sure it does what you want. Make sure it doesn't break anything. Make sure the pizza doesn't look like it comes from your competitor Mondo Pizza. Rumor has it, they put something in the cheese. If you start to follow Agile development when creating your games or apps or really any software, you'll find that your development time significantly decreases and your ability to locate and mitigate bugs will increase exponentially. Or for the business people out there, we make it faster and it works well. My final thing I learned is to not let failure squash you. Don't let it bring you down. I know this is cliche to hear and doesn't come as a shock to some of you. It's my belief that our personal failures are literally just opportunities to see where we can improve. What doesn't kill you Learn from it. Especially with something as complex as game development, it's important to see your failures as learning opportunities. If you don't, you'll wind up quitting forever and probably regret never completing a game. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was recording. Well, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, and if you have any tips, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up with my game dev journey. Thanks.